Hello and welcome to the Workplace Options Podcast. As we run towards the end of year, we are currently at 34 sleeps from Christmas. We are here to discuss the topic of taking time off. The importance of using your leave entitlements to reset and refresh, enabling your mind and body to recover and give you the best opportunity to perform well. I'm in jo- joined today by one of our psychologists, David Nuttall, and we will be exploring this topic together. Before we jump in, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which I am recording this podcast, the War of My People. When I was doing my research on the War of My People, I found out that they were slightly more muscular than their neighbours and also slightly more funnier than their neighbours. So we'll see if we can get a laugh or two out of today's podcast. David, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me, James. Cool. All right, so 34 sleeps to Christmas. I've just submitted my leave application. I'm going to be honest. I did do the Googling around how you can maximize your annual leave around Christmas time with taking specific days that neighbor with public holidays to get the most amount of days off. Turns out there is a plethora of blogs out there around how to maximize your 20 annual leave days a year. Have you ever looked at those? Absolutely. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, crazy. It's wild. I think next year in 2024, you can almost double your leave entitlements by uh, strategically placing your annual leave in and around public holidays and weekends. Did not know that. I uh, Yeah, I've like cursorily looked at it, but I'm going to put that into practice. Definitely needs to be a more proactive approach, hey? <laughs> um <laughs> But let's let's think about our first, uh, I guess, topic here, which is around why it is crucial for individuals to use their leave entitlements, annual leave of which being one, but there are plenty of other leave entitlements. We know that there is sick leave, there is personal leave, there is carer's leave, parental leave. Uh, some companies now that are quite at the forefront as well also have menopause leave and women's leave. David, how does taking time off benefit both uh, our mental and our physical well-being? Look, it, it's got all sorts of good impacts. So burnout, avoiding burnout is a key thing. Burnout's a huge issue in basically every workplace. Um, you find people just flogging themselves to, you know, get perfectly reasonable outcomes, wanting promotions or just to do a really good job or might just really care about the work that they're doing. And these are all super important things to do for your life, for your families, for, yeah, progress, blah, blah, blah. But it's super important to remember that it's a marathon, not a sprint. We spend decades of our lives working. And if we just burn ourselves out after 10 years, then, yeah, that's, what, like 30 odd years that you're not going to be able to work at your full capacity. And even, yeah, there's a there's a bit of a language shift, I reckon, that not doesn't need to happen but can be useful mm-hmm. in terms of, yeah, just assessing all of this through that productivity lens. Yeah. Like, are you working to live or living to work? Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah having work be sure great if it's a really important part of your life that's fantastic but if it's the only part of your life or the only part where you're really uh, devoting all your resources then that is a blinding recipe for burnout you know go to a pottery class yeah 100 percent so, yeah, the physical well-being, so stress, constant high-level stress has all sorts of insane physical impacts from heart disease to, I, I'm not a doctor, but I think I remember there being something about, like, how your body even processes sugar. Yeah, right. So, yeah, double-check that uh, with your medical professional listeners. <laughs> but, um yeah, and can have all sorts of nutty impacts. Uh, the body's just not designed to function under very high stress for extended periods. And I guess sleep comes into that too, which sometimes it's it's good just to take a holiday so that you can have a bit of a sleep in. Couldn't agree more. Sleep makes everything easier. 
bad sleep. You know, we I'm seeing five clients a day, and one of the first client first questions we we talk about is how's your sleep. Yeah, and there's a lot of great sort of strategies for improving sleep, and yeah, even it's so fundamental even to the way that we count time up to the holidays, like 34 sleeps to Christmas. You said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> But yeah. skipping out on sleep doesn't make it come faster. Mm. Yeah, very much so. I mean, I'm a sucker for sleep. I love sleep. Mm. Uh, like my bedtime would be quarter past nine in the evening, but then I get up relatively early. Mm. I mean, it's like most days start at 10 to 5. Oh, yeah. uh, wow. Okay. Nice. Yeah. But like I'm the kind of guy that when I go to sleep, when I go to bed, it's kind of sleep instantaneously unless i commit the terrible crime of reading work emails before i go to bed and then it is all over mine just goes into overload Uh, so that's something that i'm trying to get better at not checking emails before i go to sleep and not checking them on holidays as well absolutely that like notifications are things that are designed to be turned off yeah as far as i'm concerned um but yeah, the, even just sort of working out how your own body sort of works. Like I am the exact opposite. Left to my own devices, I'll be falling asleep at like 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. Wow. Just if there's no one around, nothing to do the next day, I'm not paying attention, whatever. Yeah. Turns out, sure, I've spent a lot of time on Wikipedia learning about like the oldest companies in the world or something. <laughs> obscure. It's like this. Japanese construction company that started in, started in like the late sixth century or something. It's amazing. Anyway, all right, family owned. Yeah, yeah, for like fourteen hundred years. That's wild. Yeah, it's amazing. You certainly, you certainly wouldn't want to be the guy that sells the family farm to use an Australian colloquialism, would you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I think so. That happened like ten years ago or something. Because the, their whole business was built around like repairing temples and building temples. Yeah. And I know. I guess ten years ago or something, they just had enough temples. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um But yeah, they they got bought by some massive conglomerate. Um, and next thing you know, I mean, it's still technically going, but. My point is it's important yes. to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, uh, nice segue there. <laughs> so I guess when we think about when we're not sleeping, we're being productive, I guess, in some ways or another. So in our current society, it doesn't matter where we live, um, most societies often value constant productivity, whether that is professional or personal. How can employees overcome the guilt or reluctance associated with taking leave? And what are the potential consequences of not doing so? Hmm. So I'm actually going to push back a little back, a little bit on that one, James. I'm not Amazing. sure. Yeah, I don't think most societies do. I think that's – I also don't want to get political, but, uh, yeah. you know, we're in like the 60s, 70s. We were promised that by the year 2000, this unimaginable sort of milestone, everyone would be working like six hours a week because robots would be doing the rest of the work. (laughs) But, yeah, the sort of system we're in, the pressures we're under to, yeah, make as much money as we can or provide as much service as we can have meant that it's actually kind of gone in the other direction. People are often working longer hours now than they have at any point previously. Mm Mm-hmm. And so that that assumption that that productivity is like the goal mm-hmm. and even framing, you know, personal productivity, like, yeah, I really hit my K- KPIs for playing Mario Kart today. Yeah. Or like, yeah, I got through so much of my book. I'm going to get a promotion <laughs> for books or something. It's that sort of mindset, I think, is where a lot of that pressure comes from. Right. So you're thinking self-imposed. Uh, yeah, like self, like internalized. Like it's mm-hmm. definitely there. There's a lot of, yeah, basically media is saturated with that idea and workplaces obviously push that everything should be centered on productivity. Yeah. Um. But, yes, where, you know, we 
humanity's been around for like 200,000 years or something. And we, yeah, sort of historically worked as little as possible to stay alive, basically, and like have a nice life, sure. But now it's like there's these sort of external carrots that they're dangling. Like if Mm -hmm. it is a promotion or it is the idea that work is what makes life meaningful. And Mm -hmm. often it is, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have to be the only thing. And so, yeah, looking at life as a whole uh, in its entirety as opposed to just what you're producing, like experiences. Um, It's not productive to watch a beautiful sunset, uh, but it's a beautiful experience, can be healing, can be energizing, can be all of these things that sure sadly fall back into that productivity trap. It's hard to get out of, mm-hmm. but the idea that something can be a value in itself is I think important. And certainly taking leave, it gives us the opportunity to have some of those experiences that we may not be able to fit in the day to day on the productivity wheel. Exactly. Exactly. So yes. Yeah, like leave that mindset at work. Sure, work hard, do your best, whatever, get the promotion, absolutely. But you'll probably enjoy life more and probably work better if you can sort of take that time and live life for itself, I reckon. Very refreshing perspective, David, a very refreshing (laughs) perspective. So what we've just explored there is around enjoying life for what it is and um, working to live as opposed to living to work. Mm -hmm. So many of our, many people, including myself at times struggle to disconnect from work while on leave. And I mentioned earlier around have I have the ability uh, to check my emails while I'm on leave. That's something that I'm trying to get better at. Can you share some strategies for truly unplugging during time off um, and reaping the full benefits of relaxation and juvenation and everything that brings for us? Yeah, absolutely. So switch off those notifications. Basically, whenever you, you go on leave or anything like that, I don't know what people's obligations are outside of work or what the expectations are in the workplace. You know, if you're getting paid for eight hours a day and then you're doing an extra two hours at night, that's, uh, yeah, free money for the people whose emails you're responding to. And, yeah, I'm not saying don't be flexible, but it's important to draw really clear boundaries around what's work time and what's your time. Uh, Yeah, notifications is a killer. Just reminding yourself that... You know, if something's so urgent that it can't wait till tomorrow, then maybe that something has gone wrong further up the chain. And, yeah, being totally clear about that responsibility, where that responsibility ends for the work you're doing and, yeah, cutting that off. Um, okay, so, so turning off notifications is a strategy. Anything around... uh uh, I guess from a, a mindfulness perspective that individuals can do to, uh, I guess, accelerate that disconnection? Because I find personally it takes me a number of days to completely unplug from work. And then sometimes as I get towards the end of my leave period, I'm starting to think about going back to work. But is there any mindfulness strategies that you can share that, could accelerate uh, that disconnection at the beginning of a person's leave period? Absolutely. Yeah, this is a a favourite topic of mine, actually. Um, So the idea being that, you know, we've got these concepts floating around in our head, which can have the same impact on us as being in that situation. So we might be thinking about a stressful email coming in even if there isn't one but that can raise our stress levels you you said it takes a while to sort of switch off or you find yourself getting a bit tense maybe before you go back to work that's a physical response to to an idea which is 
I don't know, phenomenal in itself in from like a philosophical, psychological perspective. But uh, yeah, the sort of antidote that I find works for a lot of people is just really focusing on that sort of present moment, really trying to, yeah, like notice those thoughts, acknowledge them, accept that they're there and move on from them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, one, uh, we could run through it now. Hell. Uh, so it's called the 54321 technique. Okay. And, yeah, if you're, if you're willing, get into a sort of a comfortable space. Um, what's the first sort of work-related stress thought that pops into your head? Unread emails. Unread emails, classic. <laughs> um, so... Just sort of saying to yourself, okay, I'm noticing that I'm thinking about unread emails. I'm going to look around me. Uh, What are five things in the sort of room you're sitting in that you can see? And sort of give me a a little description of them. In front of me is a computer screen with your face on it. Yeah. Okay, good. As we record this podcast, Mm -hmm. to the left is a empty coffee cup uh mm-hmm. that coffee cup had a long black in it because i am moving away from milky coffees mm-hmm. uh it was an iced long black because it is a warm day here today mm-hmm. which brings me to my third item which is the sun that is coming through the window in front of me uh my f- the fourth item that i can see is photo frame with my family in it because i like to keep them close to my uh to my place of work Mm. and the final item that i can see is my water bottle and i purposely don't have a massive water bottle so that it encourages me to get up and go and get water throughout the day as i find that my role can be quite sedentary Mm. yeah and that's one um so where are the thoughts about stressful emails right now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is you go through five things you can see, four you can touch, uh, three you can hear, two you can taste, and one you can smell. And so doing all of that, a lot of people find just really brings them back to that present moment where they are and using each of those five senses Um really anchors you and grounds you and doing that hell a couple of times a day when you first start leave can really bring you back to that. I don't know if you're wanting to be more focused on spending time with your kids or wanting to enjoy a beautiful holiday or I don't know, stay safe on the road or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Just practicing that, bringing yourself back to the moment. Um, That was refreshing. That was recharging. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, people use it in all sorts of circumstances as well. I um, uh, heard about someone using it like in the midst of a panic attack recently. A lot yeah. of people find it really useful there. Oh. Just to, to sort of, yeah, bring yourself back to that moment, gives yourself the opportunity to calm down and, yeah, makes it easier to redirect your thoughts to where you want to be going. Yeah, nice. And that's probably quite a good segue into... Any personal or professional experiences or success stories that illustrate the transformative power of taking leave? And I know, David, that you and I were discussing that some of us really enjoy what we do at work uh, and that we feel, I guess, compelled to, to do more and help more people. Uh, but have you got any, I guess, success stories that you can share that illustrate that transformative resetting capacity that is taking time away from the desk, whether that is uh, for annual leave or even for sick leave, because we know that many of our colleagues, particularly those that can now work remotely or work from home, will continue to work through it even though they are unwell. But what are some of those transformative impacts of being honest with yourself and stepping away for the time that you need? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you see it all the time. People coming back from holiday with a sort of a particular glow that is obviously, hopefully, some sort of sun safe tanning <laughs> solution. Not this guy. <laughs> yeah, good. Stay inside. Um, yeah. 
there's, I don't know, there's like a spring in the step. It's a tough thing to nail down specifically, but right. people talk about having more energy when you come back. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you sort of, it was a big party holiday, in which case you can be recovering back at yeah. work, also fine. Um, yeah, I knew a guy that I used to work with in Victoria um, was obviously visibly burning out. Yeah. And, you know, really committed to his job, loved his job, great at what he did. Uh, but it was, yeah, wearing him down. He wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't performing at his regular standard. It was like snapping at people in the office and, mm. you know, little typos in emails and that sort of thing. Yeah. And went away for two weeks. I think he went to Fiji. Right. And just like completely switched off. I think he was on some tiny weird little island where they have like manta rays all over the shop and just had this like, yeah, as he said, like transcendental, transformative sort of experience and came back and it was literally months that that sort of lasted for him. Yeah. It was great. And yeah, as you talked about getting, squeezing the most out of those 20 days a year mm. can kind of mean you can get a refresher pretty often. Yeah, exactly. And maybe it's also a thing that um, we can keep an eye on our colleagues as well. Um, and sometimes it just takes a, a gentle nudge to say, hey, have you taken some leave uh, as a bit of a reset if we can see them getting closer to burnout or getting a little bit snappy in the workplace? Because I know at times it takes my wife to give me a bit of a nudge to say, hey, let's go, let's go on a holiday, let's take a break, let's step away from work for a while. Uh, is there anything, I guess, in that, David, around encouraging those whom we work with uh, to take some leave from time to time? Absolutely. And, yeah, talking about it in the office, sort of, uh, you know, a manager can contribute to that a lot, sort of building a culture where people feel comfortable taking leave and the company will obviously benefit from them working harder or working better because they know that that sort of holiday is there for them and people feel more cared for by the company feel more happy working somewhere if the company is happy for them to take the holidays that they're entitled to um, mm. or even more hell unpaid leave knock yourselves out yeah um, so yeah and culture starts everywhere every conversation you have with a colleague about you know oh it's been a while since you had a holiday Are you like going all right how are you feeling um, talking about your own holidays and the benefits that you've noticed from it. Um, mm. uh, yeah, or just the experiences that you had and the joy that you got from it, even beyond whatever benefits. It doesn't have to be quantifiable. It certainly uh, is good fuel for conversation, isn't it? It's like the classic Wednesday chat. And I say that Wednesday is a pivotal day for me in the week because my small chat goes from how was your weekend to what's on for the weekend. Mm. Uh, whereas holiday recounts, they last forever. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly I'm... if you've shared it on social media and then people that you haven't even spoken to in a while, like, how was Europe? Like, looked like summer was fantastic over there. You're right. It is a good conversation catalyst. Totally. I'm still milking holidays that I went on like 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're doing any further planning, I've just done a quick Google. Seek tells me that in 2024, if you take 17 annual leave days, you can achieve a total of 45 days away from work. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's more than double. Yeah, okay. I'll definitely look into that. Yeah. This will be popular times, but it's good for a reason, right? <laughs> Exactly, yes. and we're given it for a reason, that's for sure. Mm. Absolutely. Well, David, thank you for taking the time today to share your strategies and your insight around the importance of taking leave and how that can lead us to be become more refreshed, rejuvenated, uh, and more productive both uh, personally and professionally, and particularly for sharing that 54321 mindfulness exercise. I'm looking forward to my leave 
starting in December, and that's something that I'm going to do on the Friday afternoon, seeing if I can leave work at work uh, for a few days off as I make the most of the public holidays here in Australia <laughs> to maximise those three annual leave days that I've just submitted. Hell yeah, love to hear it. Fantastic. Thank you very much, David. Take care. You too. Bye now.